Okay, it's minus 36 today, so it's time for some more crafts. I'm working on, uh, well, actually, my boy's going to be doing most of the work, but I'll show you a few things of getting him started on his red oak bow. So, this is the basic layout for a typical flat bow. The main thing is to find your center, okay? And when you find your center, you want to be using your tape measure, you know, like like this, rather than trying to just go like that. So I'm not going to get into detail on that, but make sure you find your mark, go like this, and then find your center, and keep doing it all the way down. Alternatively, use a charcoal string or a marking string. Okay, I'm not doing that. Okay, so this bow is uh, red oak bias. 72 inches. I've had good luck with these uh, board bows like this uh, and I build them a little overbuild because um, you know it's better to have an overbuilt bow and not fail you when a grizzly standing in your face than to have one break on you so you lose a little speed if you come down to 67 inches you'll gain more speed but again it starts to be a little bit more frangible right so we go with a little more wood lose a little bit more speed this bow is all the way full one and a half it's a little over one and a half right now so we can take it down for the final finish full one and a half inches right to there to mid limb more or less and then uh, we'll tiller it from the handle starting to bend gradually to here rather than whip ending it or whatever so there's a lot of guys on the internet doing this so I just wanted to do a brief thing maybe I'll get a little more dramatic with it but anyway here we go so it's really important when you get started that your knocks be right okay so I'm uh, I'm big on that because if you screw up the knock then you got to restart again so take your time when you're doing your knocks putts with it go real slow Get in here once you get your angle and I use a 45 degree on both sides so I'll measure here down a half inch and make my measurement here and I put it like that so it's both are the same okay otherwise just do it by eye but your eyes actually end up being your tool in the end anyway and obviously in you're in the bush you don't have any of these fancy tools you're gonna have to use whatever you got but it's just a matter of keeping on looking in here and rocking it here okay so that's gonna be good enough for us right now to do some basic tillering so she's coming close to being floor tillered I think we could probably take a little bit more off but I'm just curious to see what we got okay Sign off, Tosta. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to make our notches in here. Ah, good enough. Then I come back here and I take a second pass out of here so that... My fatty training string, tillering string will work for me. The important thing is if it's 28 inches, you end up at the base of the cut at 28 inches. Okay, so you saw how I did the second pass there, so that's good enough.
Uh, go. Okay, so, sorry my battery died. So I, I want to show you, here's what we started with. So you can see that that's all a lot of work already. And by the way, I saw this board in half. This way, come up with staves out of it. With that handsaw you saw me using on my toolbox, okay? So, no, uh, no other tools. That took a lot of work. So you can see we've come to a lot of stuff. I don't want to go into a great deal of, of uh, detail uh, just to give you guys the basics of how to get started and stuff. So, rule of thumb. Toss starts rule of thumb. It's not toss starts rule of thumb. But, okay, don't go when your bow is brand new over half the weight, the finished weight of the bow. So if this bow is going to be 50 pounds, and that's probably where we're striving for, or 55 pounds, we don't want to go over 25 pounds. I might push it a bit this time, but uh, you know, so you can tell, I like to get down here, and my scale tends to weigh things in a little bit over, like 10 pounds over when it gets heavier, like when it's weighing me. So don't go over 25 pounds. Teach your bow to bend. Okay, so one and a half inches wide, 72 inches long, red oak. Okay, one and a half inches wide at the handle. That bow is good for 50 pounds. It'll never break if you choose your wood right. Okay, and I'll talk to you a bit about that later. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I start finding out how is this bow bending And there I am, I'm at 25 pounds, I'm nowhere near half the distance of my draw. I'm at, uh, well actually I'm at 17 inch draw, so I'm a little over half my draw, but then look at the string, right? So I'm not even uh, half my distance of my draw, or I am half my distance, but with a weak string, so I'm not half my draw, and I'm at half my bow's weight. So if I keep pushing this, and I go to the full draw, Okay, if I go to the full draw, it probably is not going to hurt the bow. But if I go over that draw, I'm going to wreck the bow. It's going to take permanent set. Okay, so that's the rule. Go half the weight for now, and that's good. we got to take more wood off of it, okay? So, signing off, toss start. Okay, so, on the back of the bow, and on the belly of the bow, we want to bevel about half the size of a pea. Okay, we don't want to lose a lot of width. So this is an eyeballing situation. I don't use the rough rasp on this. Oh, and I wanted to point out, half an inch knocks are adequate, okay? You don't have to put some, you know, glue rawhide on or anything as long as it's half an inch. I mean, you might even be able to push that a little bit with a harder wood, but yeah, be a little careful. Half an inch is ideal. So you can see, and I showed that in one of my videos for John Rambo, half an inch is perfectly adequate. Measure half an inch down on the back, okay? So when you're coming here, you want it to be half an inch down there, okay? So right by rounding these corners off, we'll start to lose a little bit of weight. And it's really important that you round the corners off. Um, if you're going to glue a rawhide backing on, and you're going to use it like I use, a, it's a different method, but if you're wrapping like with string, then it's okay for it to be rounded obviously. But if you're using a pressure method, Glue your rawhide on first with it flat, then take your round off. Otherwise, you'll end up with this little uh, pockety thing here, and you don't want that, okay? So remember, half the size of a pea, and that's good enough for me.
So basically, now in a sense we're rough pillaring from the side. And then we'll put in our, uh, I noticed a few rough spots and then we're going to do more with our uh, file to get the half P. And of course you can use the 50 grit sandpaper for that too. So we start with 50 grit and we just work down until we get to a 600 grit and then we burnish. But it's basically just a constant um, eyeballing and feeling it out until you get what you want. Okay, let's see the other side and see how rough that is. Okay, so you can see it's quite rough right here, right? So, you want to put your eye on the sun and uh, use the sun and eyeball down your bow. And the teeniest, tiniest little defect will show up. So when you start with 50, you go to 100, and you go, oh my god, look what that 50 did. Then you go to the 100, and you go to the 240, and go, oh my god, look what that 100 did. Just remember, leave yourself a little extra bowl at the start. So if you want a one and a half inch wide, you know, go one and seven eighths or something and work down to one and a half. My little boy now. He's like two inches taller than me. Yeah. Let's go. So there we are, that's more or less the finished knocks. Nowhere for the Grim Reaper of bows to put his finger or really the Grim Reaper of strings either. You don't want any sharp parts where, you know, it can cut your string because the main pressure on your string is right here. So no sharp parts, okay? So okay, there's my finished knock. Okay? Then, on the back of the bow, now remember, whenever you take wood off the side or here, it, like if you have a bow that's this wide and this long, it's going to be not very strong. If you take half the wood this way, it's going to be very strong. If you take half the wood this way, you got nothing left. Okay, so being careful. I put my file on an angle like this. So rather than draw filing like that, which will cause gouges, I put it on an angle. Nice long strokes, even controlled strokes. You want to put a bevel on here about half the size of a P. Okay? On the back only, because the belly, we're going to be taking more wood off. And after I'll come along with some 50 grit sandpaper before I put too much pressure on it on the tiller stick. So then I can use a 50 grit like this. By the way, that's an easy way to make uh, just make your Cut it to your length of your block, put it down, bring one side up like that for those beginners that don't know how to do this and that's why I'm doing this anyway for someone that's never made a bow before. So I always eyeball to see what I've got. 
Okay, so and then back to it so I can lay it down like this or I can take it like this and Okay, this part here is, is this So anyway, that's the gist of it then back use a 50 grit back to it nice half round you can take it in your hand like that if you're in the bush well then you use some leather and some sand whatever else you got okay so that's how we do it mm -hmm. okay so this is my favorite method is to have the sun coming from this direction so I can look down the bowl so now you can see I'm talking about that half round of a pea. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but you can start to see a bevel appear there. So that's what I'm after. So again, it's always that eyeballing and feeling. I'm going to overdo it. See, I'll show you here. You'll see it's quite sharp. And you'll start to see that bevel appear. And we only do this on the back of the bow for now because uh, we're going to be taking the belly off anyway. You can take it off the belly, and I usually do because when you're tillering, it's good to have no fingers of the Grim Reaper can't get in to anywhere, right? So you tiller it, take some off, you can still round it a little bit, take some off and so forth. So it doesn't hurt to take it off the belly, but you don't 100% have to. Okay, so there's your half round of a pea starting to show up there. You can see it maybe shine. Then back with the 50 grit. Come along and sort of move it a little bit. You can even, you know, go with like something like this and then just rock it with your hand a little bit until it's smooth and then feel it with your hand. Because you're not going to do this more than once on the box. You want to get it right. So you just feel with your hand until you know you got it right. You eyeball down it. And until you got it perfect. Okay? Okay. That's that. Okay, I wanted to point out once I get to a certain thickness here. Usually around 7 16 of an inch. I put a mark. Okay? At 7 inches. And I don't take any more wood off here. Okay? I want this to remain narrow and thick rather than thin and fat. Okay, so now it's time to get dangerous and start taking off some serious wood. Get my... Now this is kind of my preferred method. And I even go to 50 grit. Because I don't like to uh, take too much wood off. And that happens in a real hurry. So it's going to take a lot of wood, but I'd rather go at it slowly like this than get some power tool or some stupid thing. Or, you know, well, a draw knife's good. You can take a, you know, a draw knife like anything and pull it like that. That's fine. But you got to be careful with a draw knife because. You can pick up a hinge pretty easy. It has to be kind of almost dull drawn in. So I just use the wood rasp. This is where I mean the boys are going to be doing this heavy work. So I'm just going to show you a little bit how I do it. Again, I put it on a bit of an angle, my thumb on it so I can get the pressure. And away I go. And I don't touch this up here. And I take some wood off. Then we go back to the tiller stick, and then I take some wood off, and we go back to the tiller stick. I don't just take it off on one fell swoop. Okay? And that's enough of that. This is another good method. 
Get it on something level. Notice I'm avoiding that end. Once you get down to the final points, then you want to be taking this bevel off. Especially when you get close to 28, 29 inches, whatever you're going to put it at. And then you want to be beveling, fine tuning towards the very end. Okay? But for the time being, give her. You got a belt, Sammy? Well, go ahead. Man. None of this stuff is primitive anyway. That's the whole idea is to do it with a board and some handyman tools. I'm not tossed. Okay, one of the things you want to do, I like to use a floor grid. I mean, obviously, if you're building a bow out in the bush, you're going to use an eyeball, but you can make chalk lines with a charcoal string or so forth, right? But we're making a board bow at home expediently. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use that tape measure to make the distance of the string equidistant on that tiller stick, which, by the way, is twisted but oh well let's not worry about that then you notice closer up here you see how you can use those grid lines to tell right even from the handle you can see it's starting to bend in the handle it's a bends in the handle bow and I don't want it bending too much more in the handle than that right there and this is going to be tillered like a long bow which I tried tillering it an inch down but I don't like that method so I'm back to center and luckily have enough meat so okay so there you go so right now that's with the training string which is just the same length as the bow basically training string at 24 inches okay so what I do is I put it on the, the scale pull it down until it hits its draw weight now because it's with a tillering string you know it doesn't put much strain on the bow pull it down till you hit your your maximum weight and eyeball where it was at that maximum weight with the tiller string you never pull over the maximum weight for sure ever never 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 okay so there you have it um, and from there then you're putting it at the maximum so right there that's set at 50 pounds okay and then once it learns to bend more we put the real string on it and then we just keep going with this process and if you ever think you're going to take a lot of wood off at a time coin hound rule stick your head in an ice cold bucket of water Okay, thanks for watching this segment, Toss Start.